Top 5 iOS 14 features. Let's start. First off, we're running iOS 14 on an iPhone XS Max. There's no way I'm installing this beta software onto my daily driver, the Pro Max. Number one, widgets. Yes, Apple finally invented widgets for iOS 14. And we're just joking, Apple. Please invite us to all your events. We'll do anything. Not really. Well, maybe. So again, widgets, they look like this and you can move around and touch them if you wanna enter the app, for example, weather, why not? Funny thing is that, yeah, you can move them like this, but nope, you must respect the grid. There's nothing else you can do. Even if you add more widgets, for example, like this, top here, then choose anything else. Finally, add the widget and move it. Yep, there's no way you're getting your icons to this place. They're just basically live tiles, like on Windows Phone, remember that? But much smarter, obviously. So tap on done or just do the swipe and we're done. Sure, there are more widgets in existence in iOS 14, for example, like this one or that one, which you can add onto another page, but it's just a matter of time until app developers add their widgets onto iOS 14. So let's be patient. Fortunately, more real, in my opinion, widgets exist over here. So the old widgets that we had in iOS 13 and under are basically replaced by these ones. Number two, app library or the app drawer. This is the last page that you can access when you're swiping all the way to the left. So if you got like, I don't know, four more pages in your desktop, it's just a matter of just swiping until you get there. I didn't create any of these folders. iOS did it for me. So it was magical. What happens if you tap on any of these apps, like the big ones, for example, the camera, just open the camera. However, if you tap on the smaller ones, then it opens the folder. If you wanna access all your apps in an alphabetical order, it's just a matter of tapping over there and just choosing whatever app you want. One thing though, at least in this beta, you cannot search and launch an app like this. Just have to tap on it. It doesn't matter if you've got other apps showing on your desktop. They can all exist over here at the up the draw, uh, it's not the drawer, app library. Okay, what else did we get? More privacy adjustments. For example, what happens when you enter any app that can or may, I'm looking at you Facebook, use your microphone or camera. You'll see it as a small dot or maybe you can call it LED right over here. So as long as any app is using your camera or microphone can be both at the same time, you'll see that green dot over there. We can also now let apps access all of our photos, none of them or some of them. Here's the way to do it. Just go to photos under privacy and then for example, Twitter, once again, selected photos, all photos, none. And here we can edit which ones Twitter can have access to. For example, this one and why not that one. Tap on done. Let's head over to Twitter. Hey Siri, open Twitter. And yeah, she looks like this now. Well done. Send new tweet and here we go. Two photos, nothing else. So yeah, let's expand on Siri. Hey Siri, what's the weather like? It's currently raining in 14 degrees in La Plata. Temperatures will be fairly consistent averaging about 14 degrees. Now we can wait and this will go away or we can just tap on here and we'll get right into the app. Or for example, hey Siri, go to youtube.com. Okay, I found this on the web for go to youtube.com. Here we go. Apple did say that they were improving Siri in future updates, but we'll just have to wait. We don't know how, hopefully it'll be at least as good at the Google Assistant. Finally, number five, picture in picture. How does this work? Well, I've tried it in photos, you know, the native app and of course YouTube. I had to try it, but I knew it wouldn't work. So I ended up firing up Safari and then just going to YouTube like we've just done with Siri. So now you have to open a video, go to full screen, and then you can tap over here to pop it out or you can just swipe from the bottom and you can move it over to the side, to the right, to the left, nothing happens if you tap on the arrow. So just have to drag it. And yeah, you can resize it to make it bigger and smaller. And no, 
you cannot rotate it. It's just iOS being jumpy and bouncy. So we can tap over here and just pop it right in and then exit. Fortunately though, this works over other apps or why not on the settings. So if we open once again, Instagram keeps on working, which I really appreciate. Now I know I said five things. This is just like a really small extra. I noticed that animations are just a tad, like a little bit smoother. So maybe this is paving the way for the iPhone 12, you know, the one that we're all expecting to have that 120 Hertz refresh rate. We'll just have to wait until September or maybe, I don't know, October 2020, hopefully not. So these were the top five new features on iOS 14. Yes, I know there are more things to talk about, but we just thought that these five ones were the most interesting ones, or at least the ones that you would like to know about or see. You know what to do if you like this video, please subscribe and also do not forget to enable all notifications by hitting that bell. Flan, my video editor, tell them what YouTube does if they don't hit that bell. You can also find our social media links down below and why not some affiliate links if you wanna buy anything that we feature like this iPhone or this one, or maybe this case, not sponsored by RhinoShield, but they do make good cases. So that's it for today. I'm Nicholas Fishman, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.